Hey there, it's Kimberly here with Knit for Brains, and look what I got! We're going to be talking about this brand new deck of cards that just came out from David and Charles Publications called Knitting Stitches, so stay tuned. Hey there, it's Kimberly here with Knit for Brains, and I'm so excited. A few weeks back, and I've been waiting for these for a long time, I did a review on the crochet stitches. This was by Esme Crick, who wrote the book last year called Modern or Mix and Match Modern Crochet Blankets. And I was so excited, and I did a review on this, and I loved this book. And the publisher reached out to me and said, hey, I'm so glad that you like the cards. I was like, I did. They're like, would you like a copy of the new one we've got out, Knitting Stitches? And I said, oh, yes, please, yes, please, I would. And they were super generous, and they sent it over. And so we're going to go through this one. This is Knitting Stitches, Learning to Knit Texture in 52 Cards. So the crochet stitches is the same, Learning to Crochet Texture in 52 Cards. It comes in a box just like this. I love the size. Very easy to manage and navigate. I haven't actually opened these. Now, as you all know, I knit and I crochet. Knitting... I'm not as strong in at all, probably just because I don't do it as much because crochet I just find easier, faster, so I crochet more. But I really do want to hone in on my knitting skills. And this book, uh, or this whole Beck deck of cards basically, talks about knitting stitches and all the different types. And there's 52, so you could break it up into, it's 52 like a deck of cards. You could say I'm going to try to learn one technique a week for a year. That would be a great way to do it. Um, you could shuffle them and just pick one out of the deck. I think it depends on your skill level because I think this is going to break down like the crochet one did into different groups, but we'll see. So this is actually by Claire Crompton. Um, and this is also from David and Charles. Now, if you don't know David and Charles, you know, typically I follow authors and I started doing that, but I found this common commonality, if you will, this common theme was all of my favorite crochet and knitting and, and craft designers and authors were all coming from the same publisher. And I was like, so I started following the publisher and they have amazing stuff. They have some older books. They've got some newer books. They have just some, and it turns out I already had some in my library. Um, I love the quality. I love the authors that they represent, that they bring out. And I just, I love everything that they do. And it's unique. Um, a lot of, they have, there's a book on like painting with embroidery. And they got a couple other things that are coming out. One that I'm hoping, really excited to look at. And it's about um, making cakes out of scrap yarn and then making projects. So they have a lot of really interesting books. I will actually include their website, but you can get all their box, their books on Amazon, but just so you can see some of the other things that they do. But this is their newest. Um, so it has an introduction, right? And then it's got some basics. So if you have like never picked up knitting needles, I think this would be a really good um, way for you to start. And it talks about making the stitches. They have the English method. Um, here's Pearl stocking that. So very, very basic. Which honestly, um, because I'm not what I call a strong knitter, this is great for me. For somebody who is really more proficient with knitting, maybe you want to skip this stuff, but that's up to you. Um, binding and casting off. So there's this nice little workbook in here, a nice little handy book that comes along with it. And if you just chose to take this with you and not the actual cards, like if you're going to be on the go, this would work out fine as well. Uh, increasing stitches and decreasing. So just some real basic stuff here. Uh, lace knitting. Okay, so it talks about that. Cables. Cables I have done only in very little bits, and they're they're super fun, and they're not as difficult as you think they're going to be, but there is a technique, and there is definitely a little bit of a learning curve, so it talks to you here, and it's nice because it gives you the instructions and the pictures that go right along with it, and um, it also tells you how to read knitting patterns. Now, this is something that I noticed they didn't do in the crochet stitches card book. And somebody even made note of it and made a comment. And I was like, yeah, you're right. They didn't do that. Um, they didn't do charts in the crochet workbook. I love working off of charts because oftentimes if I find a pattern that I want to do, maybe the pattern, right? Maybe it's a great pattern, but the pattern writer or the designer English is not their first language, and so they'll use charts, and charts are universal. It doesn't matter what language it's written in, it's just all a matter of charts. The crochet stitches did not have charts with each one of the stitches. 
and that was kind of a miss. But um, when it, in other words, there would be like a chart of what you're doing on the cards. And honestly, I think it was the the instructions were very well written. And I think it was just there was just no there's no room on the card. The picture is right there. It's a very good picture. There was just no room on the card, which was kind of a shame. But that's that's my thinking that that's why they didn't include charts. This one, however, I think they did. It talks about charts here in the booklet. So I was very happy and impressed to see that. And then it also has the abbreviations in the back for knitting, which the crocheted one has as well. So that was all fine. And it's got all the abbreviations in here. So let's take a look at the cards and see ah, what they look like. So they come in a deck just like this. Love the pictures. The pictures are beautiful, really nice, sturdy cards. And they have like a nice kind of a shiny, well, you know, like a coating, right? So if you spill your coffee or something on it, you can wipe it up really quick and it's, they're not flimsy. Aha. All right. So look at this. So this is the first card, how to read knitting charts. And here's your chart key. Okay. Well, there you go. There you have it. This is, this is what's really going to make it for a lot of people. And for me, like I said, for chart readers, this is valuable. Okay. So then we have the moss stitch here. Um, so what we're going to do, let's see if they break it up in the same way. So these here, okay. So we've got the moss stitch, the two stitch check, the basket weave, the pennant, lots of, re I haven't tried, well, I don't think I've done a basket weave in knitting. I've done the moss stitch. Okay. Pennant, a moss stitch rib, stepped diamonds, love that, small gingham, block quilting. Wow. Okay. Now I would consider these to be advanced. Aha. And look at that. There are charts on the bottom of these cards and they all have charts. Look at that. Okay. I think it's just that um, maybe they didn't have enough room on the other ones, but yes, the charts are going to do it for me, people. The mock cable, beautiful with the chart. Um, heart squares. That's, oh, that's pretty. And then that's a really nice chart. Okay. So I am excited about this. As a matter of fact, we're going on a big trip, um, eh, leaving soon. And I was packing up all of my projects that I was going to take on the trip and they were going to be crochet, but you know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to figure out what I want to do. And I'm going to take these cards with me. Cause what's so great about this is you figure out which pattern you want to do. And all you have to do is just take the card and it's so much easier and lighter than having to take a whole pattern book or, um, or, you know, printing out a pattern. And I do not like to have a pattern online. It has to be sitting in front of me. And this little guy, you just pop it in your bag and you're done. This is the moss stitch ladder and the ladder stitch. And like I said, boom, there's the chart. So these guys are in a kind of a light, a beige color. So I'm not sure of the breakdown. And then there's some other different colors in here. Okay, so these guys here, these are all knit and purl stitches. These are all knit and purl stitches. And if you don't believe me, right there it says knit and purl stitches in this color. So all of these, so once you master or you learn the knit and purl, these are all variations of that stitch. Awesome. These guys are Gansey patterns. Gansey pattern stitches. Okay. So you've got the full diamonds, you've got the lightning, you've got Inverness diamonds, flags, marriage lines. Oh, that's pretty. Moss stitch ladder. So you've got these. These are Gansey patterns and the information and the chart is there on the back. So that's that. This next grouping is called texture stitches. So we got here the bubble pattern. I love that. And the ruching. <clears throat> That's beautiful. Now, there is not a, a uh, chart on here, probably because there's two different stitches on here. That's okay, but that's kind of like a, a bonus, right? Again, you get two stitches for the price of one card. This is a bramble stitch. 
And again, there's a chart. Um, this is a smocking stitch. Yes. And again, there's the chart. So these are all textured stitches. Box bubble. And there is your chart. Blind buttonhole. Ooh, that's cool. Now this does not have a chart, but that's okay. Gooseberry stitch. And this one does have the chart. Okay. These are coming with me on the trip. I'm very excited. This next grouping here is called rib stitches. And in it, you've got your mistake rib and your open work. That would be me. I make a lot of mistakes. So that would be me for sure. And this one actually includes both. So it's just really going to depend on the amount of space that they have. The brioche stitch and the fisherman's rib. These are all ribbing stitches. And if you don't know what I mean, you get those columns, right? That's a rib. So this is your blanket rib and your broken rib. Ooh, that doesn't sound good, does it? Let's try that one, won't I? Harris Tweed rib, that's interesting, with a chart. Thank you very much. A puff rib with a chart, lovely. All right, the next grouping. The next grouping is cable stitches and fabrics. So we got the OXO cable. I love this. So basically you start here, you'll learn your basic. Here's how you do a cable stitch. Then you move into your, bu your book, your cards and go, okay, these are all the cable stitches I can now try. This one is your five rib braid and it comes with a chart, cable stitches and uh, fabrics. This is your circle cable. Okay. So it's got the chart. So what I would do is I would probably bring along this little thing here, bring the whole book, the, you know, if you're going to be traveling, bring the whole box if you want, or bring the cards that you want along with the little booklet. So then you can figure out how to do your basics and then you can extend out if you want into your different cards, whatever. This is a braided cable. This is the woven cables. This is a honeycomb fabric. I love it. So what I really, I, I, I love everything about this. I absolutely do, but it's, it's so comprehensive. I have some books over here on my shelf that are like for all this information, they got to be like that thick. There is no way I'm going to be able to travel with it or even just take it downstairs to where I crochet because it's just massive or where I knit. It's so big. This is such a great, convenient, compact way to, to take these things with you and to take your, your projects with you. I love this. These are all your lace stitches and panels. So this is your zigzag lace and it comes with a chart. Old shale pattern. Again, all come with chart. Quatrefoil eyelets. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Norwegian fur. I don't even, I think the hardest thing about this is trying to figure out which one I want to do. A dainty chevron and a horseshoe lace. Great. All right, the next grouping is eyelet stitches. I love eyelet stitches. So this one here is called cat's paw. That's cute. That actually looks like a cat's paw. And yes, they have charts too. Uh, razor shell and purse stitch. Those two guys. Zigzag eyelets. Open buttonhole. Right? Nice little chart there. Cat's eye. That's interesting. And the large cat's paw. Wow, you can actually really see the paw on there. That is so cool. Now, if you're wondering, so what's nice about these two is it's not, it's not trying to like, you know, like pocket you in or, or pigeonhole you into a specific pattern. Let's say that you want to try a stitch, but you want to make your own project with it. You can then basically, cause what it's telling you here to do is multiple of 14 stitches plus one stitch. So your count is going to vary. So if you're going to make a scarf, you can make it as wide or whatever, or even a blanket. You just have to make sure it's done in multiple of four stitches plus or 14 stitches plus one. So it's not pigeonholing you into, this is how many stitches you have to make. If you're going to do this stitch in whatever application you want, you're just going to do it in that number, in that grouping, whatever it is. And that's always right there at the very top. Okay. So I love it. You've got the instructions. You've got everything you need. You got your tether, right? You got your little bungee cord, so they're not going to let you fall. But you can kind of also go off on your own a little bit. All right. This last group is called drop stitch and slip stitch patterns. So we got the woven pattern or woven fabric and the heel stitch of that. Diagonal mock cable. Oh, that's interesting. Slipped basket weave. Again, drop stitch and slip stitch patterns. 
ladder check stitch. That's interesting. Interesting. I haven't seen that one before. That would be good for me because I make a lot of mistakes. But I feel like I've got all the information here. Like, I, I don't think I'll make a lot of mistakes with these cards. The bluebell stitch. Ooh, that's interesting and pretty. And the seafoam stitch. Now, I have done something very similar to that before. It might actually have been that. 52 cards. 52 cards. Right here. Knitting stitches. Textured stitches in 52. What a comprehensive set. I absolutely love this. I am so excited, but like, I mean, there's a lot of cards there, but like I said, they're nice and sturdy. So, you know, they're not going to, if you're going to carry them around a little bit, they're not going to break down super hard. I mean, you know, try to be nice to them because it's a beautiful set of cards. Love the graphics. And like I said, you know, I've got a little bit of a um, coating, so they're kind of spill proof. They have the charts. It's broken down into all the different groups and they have this really nice, comprehensive little booklet that comes along with it. These just came out from David and Charles Publishers. This is written by Claire Crompton. These are called Knitting Stitches. These come in on Amazon, I believe. Um, I will include the link to Amazon so you guys can check these out yourself. Thank you, David and Charles, for sending these to me. But this one here is all about the knitting stitches. If you want to know more about the crochet, my review on the crochet stitches, I'll include that link below here as well so you can see the comparison. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe and share it with a friend and tell people what we're doing. This is great. But this is my review on the Knitting Stitches book uh, or Knitting Stitches box of textured cards by Claire Crompton and by David and Charles Publishers. Thanks so much for watching. This is Kimberly with Knit for Brains. And as always, I'll see you soon.